Hello, and welcome to Safe Space, episode 7. Is it 7? Yeah, blimey, yeah. 7 already. Yes, this is a live tabletop role-playing show where a group of friends get together, roll some dice and play the Mothership tabletop role-playing system by the awesome Tuesday Night Games. My name is Vince Hunt and I will be your Games Master slash Storyteller slash Warden, as they call it in the Mothership system. And I'm very pleased, as always, to be joined by four amazing players who I'm going to terrorise and they'll probably make me laugh or cry or maybe something bad will happen to them. Who knows? But who are those players? Take it away. Hi, I'm Jim. <laughs> and I will be playing Sam Basil. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even... Um, I'm Lizzie and I'll be playing Wendy. Uh, I'm Gavin and I'll be playing Please Kill Me. <laughs> And I'm PJ, and I will be playing Dr. Bill Forrest. Yes, and what a motley crew they are. I mean, the the players and the characters themselves. Um, but trigger warning before we start off. This is a science fiction horror uh, role-playing system, and this is a science fiction horror story. Um, there have been quite a few laughs already, if you've been watching along, and the characters are amazing. But there's also some pretty gruesome stuff that happens in. So, So if, like... If you don't like things like body horror, gore, depictions of violence, psychological horror, nightmarish things, descriptions, um, we may go there. And if that's not your bag, then feel free to pull the ripcord and leave. Thank you very much for watching so far. If you've gotten to the, this episode, you know how crazy things can get. Um, and we're, we're going to start on a pretty crazy scene straight away. I can't <laughs> wait. Um <laughs> But, yes, if you're sticking with us, enjoy. And also, where's my books? There's my books. Yes, just just for reiteration, the Mothership system is by Choosing Our Games. Go to mothershiprpg.com to find out more. You can download the free version of Zero Edition. We're playing First Edition, which is a bit tweaked, a bit different. And it's it, although it still gives my players an awful lot of stress, both in the game and in real life. But... <laughs> But they're still here. So, without further ado, I think. Because everyone's ready, I think. You're ready to get stuck into it? I don't oh. think we've given you enough abuse yet Yay. this evening, Vince. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What, um, what? Have I missed you trying to clap tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because they can't hear it, and yet you <laughs> lovely people at home can. <laughs> So it's those, it's them that look foolish. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Always. But let's see if they're smiling in a few short moments as we start episode seven of Safe Space. Last session, the crew of the O'Brien were aboard the Icarus, recovering from two android altercations, one with a malfunctioning and murderous chef, and the other with a bartem bartender named Klaus that seemed to be acting strangely. Blaze Kelvin put the chef down, and the others had Klaus wrapped up and prone on the floor. Zam also shot him in the head, but that's <laughs> by the by. They tried to question the droid, but found that his answers were odd, broken, and raised even more questions. The passengers were nowhere to be found, but apparently had all fallen ill, and been instructed to head back to their rooms. After telling Klaus to go into sleep mode, the party then began a search of the guest deck, and after some light breaking and entering, 
discovered that the guests were not in their rooms at all. <laughs> in fact, they were nowhere on the ship. Their belongings were left behind and Dr. Forrest noticed signs that someone he knew was somewhere supposedly aboard this ship and secretly he was eager to find them, although he did not tell the rest of the crew about this. They also discovered that something else was happening to the vessel and found a strange and organic growth was covering the front of it. Not only that, but it seemed to contain some grisly human remains. Forging onwards with Blaze Kelvin, pistoled up and ready to go, the group made their way to the bridge, finding a damaged and worried android named Kel. Kel was left alone in the bridge and locked out of the ship's control, which meant she was powerless to stop the Icarus smashing into the Echo 237 satellite relay, a construct that was still fresh in the crew's mind. They wanted to see what was going on with the captain of the Icarus, and Kel led them to his meeting room and quarters. But what they found when they got there, however, was a nightmare. And that's where we're picking up this session. In fact, in quite grisly fashion. And I'm just going to paint another word picture for my for my lovely players right now. As uh, you've just witnessed Kel, the, the navigational officer of the ship, horrifically attacked by something that you think used to be the ship's captain. Now, as it steps out of the darkness of the captain's quarters, you see it properly for the first time. I did a little bit of a description last time, but that's kind of off, off the cuff. Now let's l really see what this thing is. You can see a familiar dark grey uniform accented in silver and gold like the rest of the Icarus crew, although this one seems to be definitely that of a captain. But it looks partially mangled and seemingly there are acidic burns on it as well. From the left side of the chest it turns into it also begins to turn into an amalgamation of wires, metal and flesh. The left arm itself just pipes, tubing and all kinds of strange mechanical bits and bobs interweaved with unidentifiable organic matter. You can see as the the lights flicker in the in the captain's sort of meeting room, there's sinew and organic muscles which come together in this huge left arm that is like a writhing mass of, of wires. It's almost like talons at the end of the arm. That arm was just used to stab through the face of the android that you were talking to and pin it to the ground before it seemed to partially devour them right in front of your eyes. And you you can still hear the sickening sound of the as whatever was inside this android has been is being sort of sucked up and consumed by this monstrosity. Then it sort of looks up at you with a face that looks like a a weathered grey-haired man, but it seemed to be stretched. The skin is st stretched too tightly over bone and machine. Two red dots where eyes should be, as its jaw, which hangs far too low, sort of trembles, and a strange computerised growl echoes out. I'm going to need you all to make a panic check immediately. <laughs> Upon seeing this horrific... Horrific sight. That's the one when we have to roll over our stress, isn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> what does everyone get? Uh, let's let's take it from the top. Jim, what is your stress level? Uh, my stress level is fourteen. Wonderful. Now, just for the people at home, just in case you're wondering, the mechanic of uh, mothership is when people gather, fa they fail on checks and things like that, they get a point of stress and this goes up and up and up. And if you fail a panic check, then you may get a condition or something might happen to you or, you know, there's all kinds of fun stuff. Um, I didn't realise that the stress also carries on to the players as well, but that's another thing that we pro we'll probably talk about at a later date. Um, so Jim, and they have to roll above their stress level in order to not panic. Um, Hello, isn't it? 
No, you got to roll below. I uh, no, you got to roll above. Because if you roll below, you get whatever it is. It's the only time in Mothership you want to roll above the number you have. So you have a stress level of 14. Jim, what did you mm -hmm. roll on your d20? Um, I rolled a 1. <clears throat> this? Did you roll a 1? In, did, you, did you roll a 1? I rolled a 1. Then do not panic. <laughs> because, because this, if you roll a 1, you are then laser focused. You Ooh. have advantage on all all rolls that you make. Could you roll me 2d10? Please. So just roll a d10 twice. Uh, a 3 and a 4. So for the next 7 minutes, yes. Zambrazzle is focused. Oh. So you have advantage on all rolls. It's it's one of those beautiful games where natural 1 in a panic check is what you want to get. <laughs> All right. So well done me. <laughs> yep, yeah. So you so you panicked, but you roll because in the game everyone starts with a minimum stress of two, and you can't go below two. So they've built in this wonderful mechanic that if you do roll a one, then something good happens. Wendy, how will I know when my seven minutes are up? Uh we'll we'll. I mean, we'll play through that. I'll set an it's, alarm. Set an alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Starting now. Yeah, uh, Wendy, what was your um? Stress. Uh, so Wendy's stress is 12 and I rolled a 13. So, you know, Wendy does okay. not panic, which feeling is okay. which is good, good because she is the closest to this creature as we speak. Um, as, as we said, um, mm -hmm. Wendy attempted, she did try to attempt to pull Kel out of the way before the door opened. So so therefore you're, you're in the thick yeah. of it, Wendy. Um where I want to be. <laughs> Blaze, what did you roll? Well, my stress is six. Yeah. So I rolled a four. <laughs> Could you roll me one, one uh, a d10, please? Certainly. Oh dear. <laughs> Eight. Okay. You have. Uh, you are overwhelmed <laughs> by this. <laughs> all, uh, all actions at disadvantage for the. What did you on your D10? Eight, eight. For the next eight minutes, you've got disadvantage, and <laughs> permanently raise your minimum stress by one. So your minimum stress is now three. God damn. Um, is that a <clears throat> trauma response? Oh, like, yes. Do you have anything? Whenever you panic, everyone else <laughs> nearby must make a fear save. Okay, before before we do this, we'll get the docs, because everyone made a panic check. So, Doc, you what was your stress level? 15. Okay, what did you roll? 12. I'm already deflated. I don't... You, you are <laughs> deflated. You have another condition, Doc. So you're you're in hell. Uh, no. You are haunted. Oh, oh fuck off. <laughs> He's got ghosts. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> the wonderful thing about this is the players have given Comedy me little ghosts. bits little bits of backstory, etc. So who knows how I can torment them <laughs> as the time goes on. But because of the, the marine in the party, the known marine in the party, did panic, everyone has to make a fear save. Zam with advantage. And I use my military training to recognise that this might be a thing that happens. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll allow that. I'll allow that. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Zam, what did you get? 22. And which is a pass. A pass. And it doubles. Oh, Okay, so I mean, I mean, you're laser focused. How much can Zan? <coughs> I will say on the. Oh God, you've already got advantage. Maybe we've got another marine in the party. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've turned it ablaze. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'm coming for you, brother. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will say. For a twenty-two, it's 
because when you get a double on this game, it's criticals. And that was such a good roll for Zam. I think it's only fair that you have, and it was on a fear save. So I'm going to give you this. A little bit of home brewing I'm just doing on the fly. You have a fear save success in your pocket. Okay. So at some point, if you get one later down the road, you can say, I'm, it's an automatic success. On that. Okay. okay? Thank um, you. Because it's the sort of situation where I can't give you, you know, it's not like you, yeah, no you're worries. doing really well. So uh, just making note of that. Okay. Uh, how did Wendy do? So even with the little bonus up to trying to get below a 52, Wendy rolled a 68. Oh, so that's another point of stress. Mm -hmm. Wendy and poor Doc Forrest, who's now deflated and haunted. <laughs> well, I rolled a 35. My fear score is 14. So. Okay, another point of stress for Doc. What is what does, what, what does haunt Does haunted give me any actual. There is, anything... there is nothing mechanically. Oh, that means you're going to be a prick later, though, doesn't it? That's the that's the bullying that Lizzie was talking about earlier. <laughs> what can I say, PJ? You gave me a bit of a backstory. Yeah, I know. It's my own fault. <laughs> so, all of this has happened. And uh, Wendy, you're up in its grill. I need... There isn't a surprise round here, so it's just a straight up speed check. Everyone give me a speed check to see whether you go before or after the creature. Um, and while they're oh, doing this... Oh, shit. Sorry, Vince. Because of deflated, how much stress do I gain for other people failing those checks as well? Oh, God. Uh, oh, God. And does it count for the panic roll? <laughs> oh. Yes. Whenever anybody... A nearby crew member fails a save, gain one stress. Um, I will say in this sense, just gain one extra stress. Okay. <sighs> I'm not going to... Do I gain a stress from any of my... <clears throat> Did you fail anything? You, um... well, I failed the panic check, but... Yeah. Did you get stress? Um... Yeah. I won't do it for this. No, I think it's going to be quite stressful anyway. So, um... And also your minimum stress has gone up to three, so I'm not... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, how's Doc Forrest doing right now on a stress? 17 for stress now. 17 for stress. Okay. 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 Right, everyone roll a, a speed check. I can work check. with this, it's fine. Yeah. Remember, in in Mothership, this isn't necessarily a let's all fight, and certainly PJ's been playing it brilliantly because the Doc isn't a fighter. Yeah, um, he's a coward. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it is a game of survival, so, you know, look for things, look for cover, all kinds of good stuff like that. Um, okay. Who succeeded their speed checks? Hell yeah. Okay, let's get some lovely numbers. Um, Zam, what did you get? I got 49, and uh, my speed is 45, so I failed. Okay. But I don't get stress on that, do I? No, I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing it on the speed checks. That would be sadistic. Um, that counts not like you as well. I don't get stress for him failing his speed. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that to you, PJ. The doc, the doc won't last past 15 minutes if we're doing that. Right, okay. Uh, Wendy. And it just got interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy? I got a four. Oh, Ooh. wow. Okay. Um, Blaze? 73. That's a fail. Okay. Come on, Blaze. We need you. No, 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 no. I'm bricking it. Um, Doc, what did you get? 67. Fail. 67. Oh. I hate all my dice tonight. Okay. So. Try these ones. These are my lucky ones. <coughs> Now, Wendy, you go first. This thing is... It can't touch you right now. Um, it is nearby. Um, range guidelines in Mothership, there are four. There's close, nearby, far away, and out of range. Um, weapons and things like that have those kind of range things on them. So, it can't touch you right now. Um, because it is also... Its claw is pinned into the floor, and it is just finishing devouring this poor android that was trying to help you. Um, in the room that you're in, um, you're on the back of the room where there's a there's a door on the on the rock, on the far right hand side. There's a sort of a <clears throat> a large desk, a large captain's desk, that you're probably on that side of the table. You're behind the desk, um, 
I don't know whether the other the other players might be on the other side of the desk because they only just sort of entered when you rushed forward to try and stop Kel getting in. Are we actually in the quarters, sorry, or are we um, in the office? Well, Wendy would be. I think the rest of you would pretty much be in the doorway or somewhere close to it. I don't think you're bunched up the, in the doorway. From the office to the quarters, though, so we're in the office... You're in the office. You're not in the quarters right. because this thing stepped out of the doorway. There's like you yeah. can't you can't see any of the quarters. It was a dark room, and this thing came out cool. and just attacked Cal. Um, and Wendy, what would you like to do? Um. So Wendy is now in instinct mode, and all of the kind of. <sighs> Of Wendy has gone now. She's this kind of wired up little bomb that's about to go off. <laughs> um, so Wendy is going to run over to it, get my boots, which are dangling over my shoulder, and kind of wrap them around his neck and start to squeeze and try and garrot him with my tied up boot laces. <clears throat> okay. Just to paint a picture, this isn't a small man. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a small man. Um, yeah, he did. I'm an angry lady. He, he towered over Cal. Yeah, you can totally do this, by the way, and I'll, I'll let us play it. Um, if, if it requires jumping up onto the desk to get the height to then do it, you could. So you I could totally do. Hold him onto, you yeah. could totally do that. I will um, say, <clears throat> make a combat check. I mean, I've got two guns, but that's boring. <laughs> can I add my athletics to my combat? Check? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that is a two. So you see, as the rest of you, and Blaze, you're freaking out at seeing this thing. <laughs> like, Wendy steps back and then all of a sudden just sort of like, almost parkour, uh, just hop, hops, onto the, hops onto the desk and sort of takes a step and climbs, because as this thing's left arm is still sort of pinned down to the ground, she sort of climbs, she uses it as another step to get around the back of this thing. Wendy, what you see when you're on the back of this thing, <laughs> this isn't just a normal back. <laughs> this is a, this is a hideous mutated. You see now, and you just land on it, and you begin, like trying to choke this thing, um, with your boot laces. <laughs> Still attached to my boots. So yeah, 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 yeah. So you're trying to, um, and you catch it because that because there's no sort of mouth or, and where the jaw. Hung, hung down, you catch it sort of in the mouth and you're sort of pulling on it. This is making this sort of like, and this is like it's hideous and it echoes around the room, which is nightmarish. But, and you feel as you're sort of on its back, like your knees are sort of like the flesh on the back is sort of undulating and moving, and you feel your knees are sort of it's almost like your knees are lowering into soft mud. As this thing, and you can you can see as the you can still hear the from the wires, and on the back you see like these small pockets of like like sort of gunge and liquid just going as this thing is just consuming this android, um, and you are just you're just pulling away at this thing. Uh, could you roll me a, a D5, so a D10 in half, please? That is a one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> I love my D10s that roll low. <laughs> okay, and uh, as you pull at this thing, you feel like... The... <laughs> I knock loose a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well the, the teeth are further up. You feel oh, that no. the laces sink into the soft flesh and it gives a little bit. As you're sort of tearing into this this creature, and and she and it's sort of writhing, and the rest of you can see this thing. It's trying to move, and it's still got its arm stuck in the floor currently. I'm and just gonna yell. Either shoot it or get out of here. <laughs> this is carnage. Um, is that it for your turn, Wendy? Yeah. It's now the creature's turn. Lee. <laughs> As it sort of goes and it sort of twitches a bit, 
and it's it tries grabbing up at you with its free hand. Now, when you, when it right when it reaches towards you, you see that this is a hand that's a human hand that looks slightly melted in places. You can see bones and bits of metal in it, um, and it's going to try to try and grab you. And it does. <laughs> Just. <laughs> uh, as, as you feel like this, as you're pulling this thing, sort of grabs hold of your jacket. And it's going to make. It's going to try and throw you off. Just completely throw you off. That, okay. will, be, that will be its move. So. Roll me a strength check. Please, Wendy, to see if, if you if you could, if you succeed on this strength check, this isn't a panic thing. I'm not going to get you to panic, mm. but if you succeed, you stay on. If you fail, this thing's okay. throwing you across the room, and okay. you, you may get a bit damaged. Uh, that is my strength is 33, and that's a 31, so that's a success. <laughs> As this thing is trying to, and you just the veins in your neck, you're just like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that's the creature. You see this thing trying to grab hold of Wendy, and now it is happy. Here. It is the laser focus Zambrazel. <laughs> okay. It's a lot uh, of growling in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm gonna take my uh, handheld laser cutter. Now, now, hold on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> because as we've said before, your laser cutter is not handheld. Your laser cutter is a Gatling gun. Oh, no, no, not Benice. Are you talking about the hand welder? Are oh, you the talk... hand welder, sorry. Yeah, cool. Yeah. No, cool, cool, yeah. cool. You yeah, will so have to go right up Benice to this thing. back on the ship. Yeah, I, the hand that's yeah. trying to, like, oh, is attached to the, to Cal. The one, I Try would say it. the one that's closest, yeah, you're, you're going for that, the arm that's attached yeah. to Cal. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to try and cut through that. Okay, roll a, uh, Combat check. I get advantage on this. So you yeah, yeah you're going to move in. So your movement will be to rush into the room. Yeah. And then your action is going to be to try and. Yeah. Cut cut into this thing. And you when you Can get I out there. Add industrial equipment to it or. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So fifty one. Right. Well, that's a twenty one. Well, I'm gonna try and roll. I'm gonna roll again just in case I get. Uh, we'll ignore that one. Twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you run over, and as soon as you get over there, this isn't a thin arm. This is like a tree trunk, so you know, and and you start cutting into it. And as you're cutting into yeah. it, it, it's like, it's, I mean, the look of it and the liquid that comes pouring out is very reminiscent to the sort of stuff that you saw on Echo 237. There's this brown, metallic, coppery-like sludge. It just start, starts going... Shh, as you're cutting into it. Could you roll me a uh, a D10, please? Certainly. This thing can cut through airlock doors, so it's it's not an immediate weapon. You're going to have to keep going for a bit. Uh, I rolled a zero. So, so you've got ten. ten. Yeah. <laughs> Have some of this. <laughs> you are hacking into this thing, doing a lot more damage than the warden thought he would do. Um, <laughs> and but never but underestimate Zam Brazel. But Zam Brazel is also <laughs> slightly ash from the Evil Dead right now, as all this like <laughs> sludge is just hitting him, and Wendy's choking it. Oh, um, it's going to be Evil Dead. Then it's, who's laughing now? Who's laughing? <laughs> I mean, if Blaze wasn't going to panic before then, <laughs> what is he seeing? I'm surprised the Doc is still alive. <laughs> I'm this. These are his friends that are doing this. Um, uh, but Zam, you are all up in its grill as you're both attacking it. And now I believe it is the Doc's turn. I would imagine um, Doc is behind Blaze because Blaze sort of entered the... You're kind of already... A little bit in the room, Blaze, I would imagine, before you stop. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So you're in the doorway, Doc. It's up to you what you want to... Um, 
How much? How much room is there to maneuver around? It's a decent sized room. It's not like a. It's not like a tiny room that you know you can you can walk all the way around the table. Um, imagine Picard's room was like you know he had a desk and there's a little bit of space in there. It wasn't, it wasn't too much of a cubby on, but you got you got room to get in in the room this and out of the reach of this thing if you want. I want to try and get in the room, move around it, and sort of just just start because I'm useless mm. <laughs> in this fight. So I just want to then sort of start having a look around the room to see if I can figure out okay. anything about what's been going on and yeah. You can um, certainly do that. Your movement is to get in the room, and you do see on this desk um, there is a small bottle of whiskey which has fallen over, and it was open. When Wendy jumped onto the desk, it sort of knocked it over, and th this whiskey... Sorry. It's expensive-looking whiskey. Oh, really out. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the, barely and, register yeah, it. Yeah, barely register it. You do see there's a data pad also on this desk. Um, near where the captain's seat are, the, the the chairs knocked over. There's some books. There's some sort of general sort of books, but the data pad is the thing that catches your eye. Um, and there are there is there are drawers. There's one set of drawers within this desk. Where if you get into the corner and sort of looking around <laughs> like a rat, get into the corner, and go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with everything else that's going on, the data pad I would say would be the first yep, thing okay. you, you notice. Um, that is your movement though. You've still got you could do another action. You could move you could run out of the room if you want. <laughs> Just a duck down. You want to duck down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you can take cover, because the desk is um, a decent yeah. amount of cover as well. So yeah. yeah. And all you can do is hear the sounds of like the I'm trying to avoid rolling dice right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Play smart, people. Play smart. It's not always <laughs> about the dice. <laughs> um But now it is all about Blaze Kelvin. What does Blaze do? There's a moment where your breath is caught in your throat and you've never seen anything like this. And you've seen some shit. I'm overwhelmed, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die. He's, he's a real oh method no. actor. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um. No. Uh, uh, can I try and shoot it? Yeah. You are um, and not hit Wendy. Yeah, you are far away. I, I would say on the on the structure of, of where this thing is, I would say it can't get to you where it is. So I'm adjudicating it. There is, you can. It's normal range for the pistol. And you're and you're damage. aiming not to. Where are you aiming? This uh, is a hulking thing. Imagine like you know. There is a large mass here. Wendy's on the back choking it. Zam is kind of in the way of the arm. So he didn't want to shoot Wendy, so he never expressed any interest in <laughs> not shooting Zam. <laughs> so, you know. There it is, folks. There there's, it is. There's there some there paranoia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took a while. The, I'm aiming through Zam. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, center mass. If I can, if I can catch it in the a clear shot. Catch it in the chest. Kind yeah. of where the where the jaw is right now. Imagine that. Um, yeah. Maybe slightly lower, maybe more like diaphragm area. Okay. Make um, make your combat check. I get a plus ten because of the military training. Yeah. Ooh, Nineteen. Ooh. But uh, fifty-seven fail. The shot goes wide. Doesn't hit anyone. But in the concerted effort to try and miss Zan Brazel shooting him in the back, <laughs> um, the shot. Watch yourself, please. Ricochets off, um, and you haven't moved. You're still there. Uh, you call yourself a goddamn marine. <laughs> Act like a marine. This is all this Need gore. To get out of here. This is all this gore is covering Wendy's face. <laughs> 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 You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna run at it. I, I will yeah. say, that'll be your action just to run straight at it. Then yeah. that that should turn over. Yep. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed, Vince. I'm not thinking right. Okay. <laughs> Gav, do you have a third character rolled up? <laughs> Doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Then, um, Clay's Belvin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get some more speed checks. Second round. I'm still at disadvantage, right? Oh, my low dice is falling yes. on the floor. Yes, yes, you're at disadvantage. I can do Close. these at advantage as well, can't I? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Even my lucky dice, which is a set Gavin bought me a couple of years ago that normally roll really well, just fucked me over. <laughs> no, they've, <laughs> they've run out of luck. Yep. <laughs> okay, Zam, what do we get? 31. D is that a success? My speed... Yeah, my speed is 45. Beautiful. Okay, Wendy. Uh, I got 61 against a target of 37. So that's not good. Okay. It's because I dropped the purple dice on the floor and I can't go and pick it up until oh. the break. You can pick it up. I'm a professional. No, you can pick it up if you want. No, it's fine. Is it fine? <laughs> um, Blaze... No such thing as lucky dice. <laughs> You'll die now because Lizzie you... couldn't pick yeah, up the right yeah. dice. dice. Um, <laughs> Blaze. What did you get? 17. With, oh, di with disadvantage as well. Yeah, the first one was 13. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, you see? That's amazing. The training's kicked in. Yeah. Although I think, if I remember correctly, you've got three bullets in that gun now, haven't you? Because you had, you had four in each clip, if I remember correctly. Yes, From I was session. handed a fresh pistol as well. Oh my. You, how many pistols have you got? <laughs> They've got two each of them, though. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. God, what have I done? Yeah, Zam, Zam handed him out. Was it Zam? Yeah. Yeah. Doc. yeah. yeah. Uh, and Doc, what did you get? I rolled 37 against a speed of 33. <sighs> so close, so close. But Blaze, you're rushing up to this thing. And uh, the smell hits you immediately. This, this, yeah. this rotten, horrible, acidic smell. <laughs> Zam. <laughs> Sorry about that. Like, yeah, but of course, get it. Um, and you get right up. You you can get close up to this thing now. What would you like to do? Where's Wendy situated? She's on its back, like she's on its how, shoulders. She's sort how, of like. Are you like leaning back, choking it, or are you like almost, you know, cheek to cheek? No, I think I'm more kind of. Almost like kneeling on its yeah. shoulder blades yeah. and kind of leaning back to kind of pull. Yeah. That can I sense? can I try and shoot it in the head? Yeah, its, it's head is sort of it, it's strange because it's almost like a hunchback in some ways the way it's mutating and the way Wendy's moving out a bit. It, she is lifting its head up, so you can try and shoot it. And is it is its jaw still open? Because if it is, I would like to. Yeah, its jaw is open. The top of the head moves top. and the bottom doesn't move. I'll pop my gun in there. <laughs> You're going to put it in the mouth? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Make a combat check, please. Oh, that's not good. But let's see if it gets any worse. No. 71. 71. Misfire. <laughs> oh, no! <It's> just <laughs> yeah. Can I try again? Or do I have to do a movement? What do I do? What do I choose? Um, now the internet's probably going to say, "Well, guns don't work like that," and I don't know it. Um, space guns. Space yeah. guns. Yeah, space pistols, mm. isn't it? I would say that the round, because the reason that this gets 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 more complicated is because you put your hand in its mouth and then fired it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. I would say it's probably going to take your action to to pull the gun out and pop the the cartridge out. Yeah. So, so um, then, yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah. So you're still up in its grill, but you're just going to be ready for the next time. Yeah. That okay. Damn space junk. <laughs> okay. Um, and with that, it's Zam's turn. Are you still cutting away? Am I doing any like? Real damage. Oh, you're it? cutting into this thing. This thing, yep. you're you're carving into this arm. Okay. Go carry on then. <laughs> God. So it's still my fifty-one. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's a forty-eight. A 
that's an 81, so we'll ignore that and say 48. Okay. You keep cutting away. Roll me another D D10, I believe, is it? Yeah. A uh, seven. Seven. And I've got a roll on the wound table. Oh. Get in. Um, there's lots of blood. Like this thing is, <laughs> yeah, just absolutely. It's just geezers of it. It's just. <laughs> um, you. Sam's no squeamish. She's just cutting through. Yeah, he's got his eyes closed almost. It's. No, he hasn't got his eyes closed. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I would say <laughs> it will take you another go. Okay. To cut, you, you think you can hear this thing? <laughs> yeah. Would is you... it reducing the amount of power it's drawing then? Who knows. Okay. <laughs> You've got another. Do you want to keep going? Yeah. Then roll another combat check. Okay. Ooh, you don't like that. Oh. Eh, uh, failed that one. Fail? Okay. Yeah. So do I get a point of stress? Point of you? stress because the welder stops. You're cutting yeah. through, and it's all of a sudden. Ah, uh, goddamn piece of space junk! <laughs> As this thing's just. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh dear. And it is now the creature's turn. <clears throat> it has three targets. It is going to pull its arm out of the android's head and just hear <laughs> as it just just this empty pocket in a flight suit just <laughs> and Wendy you're still holding on it don't, you don't feel like you're still sort of struggling with it and Zam you're 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 sent reeling um, that will be its first action. And then it's going to lash out with this arm at Zam, who's been cutting into it. And I rolled a seven. <clears throat> As this thing just all of a sudden just catches you off, like that the hand welder stopped and you pause for a moment, and all of a sudden yeah. you saw the thing happen and it cracks you right in the face. And like the, the the metal and everything, just the blunt force trauma of it, and you can feel like just the shrapnel also cut you across your face as well and throws you across the room for thirteen points of damage. Oh, right. <clears throat> so that's thirteen on the health bar, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. One, two, <laughs> I think Zam, Zam's pretty sturdy, so I don't think he's suffered a wound yet. But he has been knocked like across the room, and he's prone, and he's yeah, like, not so quite, not quite needing to roll for a cool. wound as cool. yet. Cool, cool. But you are, you are bleeding. You, you, that was that was blunt force trauma, but the, your your fo side of your face is sort of. I'm gonna spit some teeth yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> Yours? Yeah. I'm, I'm Maybe. For, for a bit of, for a bit of fun. I'm gonna say a bit of fun, <laughs> um, and you won't incur stress on this. But just roll me a strength check, please, Sam. Is that with advantage? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that's a ninety-seven, and that's a thirty-five. So. Strength is 34, so it failed. Oh, you dropped the hand welder when it hit you. The hand welder's still right next to it, but you got launched 10 feet across the room, and Doc, you see this, like him hit the wall hard. And, like, he's bleeding from his head. He's covered in this strange goo. And it's your turn, Doc. Okay. 
I'm going to see if I can find anything on this data pad, occasionally glancing up to make sure that <laughs> coming at me. Don't mind me, I'm just going to McKindle. Yeah. <laughs> While I lie there. Exactly like what Gav just did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> um... Waitrose order, I must get it in. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to Other find the monster's weakness. How much for next day delivery? <laughs> um, you can certainly see on the data pad immediately, um, because all of this is happening in like a 10 second moment, um, there is a screen containing uh, notes on guests who are currently in cryo sleep. Guests in cryo sleep? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a few guests who are currently in cryo sleep. One of which... It's Sarah Madigan. Okay. Um, the other name, as I just pull up my uh, little guest sheet, Roy Zetterling is in there. Um, Flint Madigan is also in cryosleep. Okay. And... Uh, there are another, um, it seems like there's more pages to it, but when you go to try and swipe, it won't let you. You need the captain's thumbprint. I... But it's like it's frozen, it's like a, we've all had an iPad or a Kindle or something like that that's just frozen up and you're like... I've got the information I want. Yeah. Um, so that was, I mean, I would say with the 10 seconds in order to sort of like check through all this, do you want to move, Doc? Yeah, towards the door. Okay, the doc, the doc is running for the door. <laughs> okay, we can go now. <laughs> and it's um, Wendy's turn. Okay, tell me when I when to stop. What I'd like to do. <laughs> I will never tell you to stop, two. Wendy. Go for it. I brace myself so that I'm holding on to the boots with one incredibly strong arm. Get my gun out and shoot down into its head. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I love this. I love this. Okay. Um. If I can shoot twice, that would be amazing, but you probably won't let me. I would say because of the nature of still having to kind of yeah grapple if it. that's what you, you want you want to grapple it and you want to shoot yeah okay i will I I, keep, i'm keeping hold of it and yeah. i want to shoot it i will i will um I, let's play it like this i will allow mm -hmm. you to do the shot no, no matter yeah. what but we'll do a strength check first to okay. see if you can hold on and shoot you'll still be able to shoot but you might fall off it yeah, afterwards yeah. yeah god i need that purple dice no come on green green so this is strength yeah. With your athletics. athletics. Yeah, you can have athletics. I'm guessing military training's a bit of a stretch. I'll allow it. <laughs> so I'm looking for a 53. Come on, the green. 50. 50. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, greens. You Shut dig up. You dig your knee in even further into this soft, strange organic flesh. Whoa. And then you put your, the gun down. Make a combat check. Uh, so I'm looking for a 56. With advantage, with advantage, I'd say, because... Well, the first one's a 14. <laughs> See if you get a critical. And the second one's a 16. So I really mean to shoot this one. <laughs> okay, then <laughs> roll me your damage with your pistol. Which is a d10? It is one d10, yeah. Cool. Use the high one. Seven. Seven. What an action scene this is. This is unbelievable. Um, as Blaze, you see this, Wendy's just bang! She's just firing into it. She's going to go, and it's still sort of writhing around. This is a, I mean, it was a back of the head shot. This should take something down. And it doesn't. It's sort of writhing, and like you can see the mouse start going, as there's more sort of like wires and stuff begin. Peeling out as the as this this human like face is becoming less so as it's just as whatever is within it is angry, <laughs> getting angrier as it's just being cut to shreds and shot and beaten up. 
Um, and uh, but Wendy's still on its back, and she's in she's in a prime place for another two shots next time. Now that she's got the gun out, she's gone full wick. She's gone full John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another speed check. I knew the first half of this this episode was going to be non-stop action. Ooh, bugger. Okay. Zam, what do we get? you still got advantage, remember, Zam? Yeah, 28. Speed is 45. Okay. You are currently sort of prone, if you know what I mean. It's, yeah. Um, you're on the floor um, and bleeding. Well, the other one was a 99, but I'm not going to take oh, that. Oh, yeah. You're not gonna take that. <laughs> um, go out in airlock. No. Um, oh, go on, Jim. Go on. <laughs> uh, Wendy, what did you get? 77. Okay. Th thankfully, that wasn't during the actual fight. That could have gone wrong. Really oh, I know. Um, Blaze, what did you get? 51. Fail. 51. Fail. Still not right. And the dock. 30, which is a success. Oh, amazing. Now that he's running away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Zam, you're shaking your head. You're seeing stars and the, the top of your head feels warm. You can feel the blood running down your head as you look over and you see the dock <laughs> running out of the room. Um, what do you do? As you're sort of sat against the wall at the moment and you can see what's happening. You can, you can hear just gunfire. Um. So what kind of damage? What what's what's looking weak on there? The arm is, I mean, the arm that hit you is badly damaged. It's like yeah. sort of like partly hanging off. It's like it's like you've half cut a, a vegetable root and like yeah. it's, it's the stem of it's sort of split. Um, and I mean to be fair, if this was a human body, it's slightly melted and being torn to bits anyway so it's hard to tell what is damage and what is yeah. whatever the hell it is you've never seen anything like this but there's definitely damage happening you just saw wendy shoot it in the yeah. back of the head but it's still it's still standing it's still standing and moving yeah i'm just wondering whether i should move back to trying to cut the arm off or whether i should use the nail gun i would say zan would know this the yeah. laser cutter is going to do more damage than the. Nail okay. Gun. Yeah. He's going to go back to. I'm going to get that goddamn arm. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so I'm going to move move towards. So you can the, you the stand arm, up, pick up. Stand up. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up the hand welder. Hand welder. And you're going to try cutting it. Go combat. Yeah. And I can still use my industrial equipment. Yeah. This thing's moving now though, so it might be. Yeah. A, so I would say, with that in mind, I would have said disadvantage on the roll because this thing is moving and it's like wires and stuff. So it'd be a straight roll. All right, okay, because yeah. I've just done two rolls. Okay, what was your first roll? So the first roll was eighty something, and the second roll is a one. <laughs> I will take your first roll. <laughs> Roll again! Roll again! Um, no, actually, to be fair, I, I said that when you hadn't rolled, so we'll ignore both of those rolls. Uh, straight roll. Straight roll, okay. Yeah, see if you can... Oh, God. <gasps> 33! So that is a critical success. Mm. Roll, roll the damage. Must be... Uh, D10. Mm -hmm. And is that with advantage as well? Um, no, that was... <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, that's a, that's a three. Three. Um, it will be 13 points of damage in total. Because you got a critical, I'm allowing it to be max damage okay. plus whatever yeah. you rolled. Two. <laughs> you carve the arm off. As it swings back, you ignite the hand welder just in time just go boosh, and you lean back just as this thing swings towards you and it's boosh, and wires and gore just scatter across the desk and now it's just like a, a, a stump that sort of all of this oil and strange mechanical liquid and blood is flying everywhere but you've cut the arm off 
I don't know what it is about these players. I, I give these creatures methods of killing people, and these players take them away. <laughs> <laughs> it's, almost like, cups. it's almost like we've got good strategy. Exactly. Somehow. Um, I think it counts. You haven't invented a kicky yeah. monster yet. No. Oh, I'll write that down. <laughs> um, but you're you're right there, um, Zam. This thing is, I mean, it's lost. It's lost an arm. It's still it's still kicking and it's still angry. Um. Okay, now it's the doc's turn. So I'm not. You gotta do I'm what you gotta do. I'm not leaving you without away. them. <laughs> but you're not staying. <laughs> because I will die alone on this ship. Um, <laughs> uh, it's getting I into a cupboard. <laughs> there's, no. Uh, if I, so how if I how back, stressed is the doc? He's on 17. Okay. And he and does, he's got a key card. He doesn't have the no. in, inhaler either, does he? He won't be able to get through the doors, will you? No, if I you're gonna If you're going to try and go to the cryopods... Oh, no, I'm, I'm not leaving this room on my oh, own. Oh, right, okay. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, I turn back around. How, what's the situation that I see? The the wires in the arm have just been cut off and they, they scattered across the desk. Um, and they sort of land in the spot where you were just a few moments ago. <laughs> so it's probably good that you weren't there at that point, moment in time. Zam is absolutely covered head to toe. Wendy is just on top, just firing. And Blaze has just, he essentially just freed up his gun. And he'll be okay. ready to go in a, in a minute. So there, these three are in it. I roll my eyes. I'm going to regret this. I pull my vial of acid out of my pocket. And I'd like to run in and just ram it down the creature's throat. Another secret marine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love it, love it. So from out your pouch, you root round and you find the acid. The only one I got. <laughs> so you run up to this creature, which is a nightmarish vision, is like you know when has you're going to have to push past Blaze in order to get. So we're, we're, there's a more that's opening up. It's sort of a dark shape that you saw Blaze put his hand into just a minute ago yeah. before pulling it back out. You have a vial of acid. Okay. How do you... <laughs> this is not a rip-off of a catchphrase. This is just for me to know. How do you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Literally just get my hand as close to it as I can and then drop it in, in, its mouth. in the mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> it is the creature's turn next, Doc. Mm. You can do this. You Sense can do butt. You can do this. And because it's a vial of acid, I will tell you how much damage it does in a second. But you need to roll me a speed check to get your arm back out before the bear trap shuts. Okay, here we go. Roll a speed check. I think I just lost my hand. Is there? Can we give him advantage at all? No. Um. Can't use surgery on this, can I? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. I've, I've rolled a fifty-two, and my speed is thirty-three. Okay. What if Zam stumbles because he's still out of it and just knocks into the dock after he's dropped the acid? The dock made his choice. Okay. The dock's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did say you were going to regret this. So. Yeah. Yeah. As you put your hand in and as you sort of let go of the vial... It comes down. They the players didn't hear that, but you lovely people at home did. Yeah, that one oh, did. did you? Oh, yeah. 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 Actually, quite. Yeah. yeah. What you don't hear is the bones snapping. 
and we'll find out how much damage it does after the break. Oh, fuck <gasps> you. <laughs> Join us in five minutes to see how much crazier this is going to get. I am loving this. I am loving this. Wow. It's amazing. But Doc, <laughs> right? We'll Back see you in new wow. character. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you in five. <laughs>
and welcome back. So, Dr. Forrest did a heroic deed. Put his hand into the mouth, what, what he thought was the mouth of this beast, pushing, pushing past Blaze Kelvin and dropping a vial what? of acid in. Don't tell me it was the anus. <laughs> I don't know how aliens work. <laughs> That'd be even worse for the alien, though. Although, what's happening now is quite bad for it. I will say that. Um, PJ, could you roll me 2d10, please? Fourteen. That's how many points of stress you've just gained. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's how many minutes you have to live. <laughs> although, yeah, okay. Right, we're we're, just gonna, we're gonna get into this now. There is the sudden pain and the crunch as this mouth just instinctively shuts. Or whatever this thing is. It's, like, there's, it's, not a, it's like a mouth within a mouth. It's two sheets of metal that clamp around your wrist. Um... And the pain is unbelievable. You take... Thirteen points... of damage. That gives me a wound. A wound. Um, so we are going to... Roll, roll me a d10, please, PJ. It's a ten. It's a 10. Mm -hmm. I don't think I wanted that, did I? <laughs> I don't think you wanted any of this. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you lucky son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. You are very lucky. This is on the gore and massive damage table of the... <laughs> Of the, it's my favourite table. Yep, yep. If you're a roll, well, no, I would have had to play with that. <laughs> the the things that could have on the on the wounds table. There's lots of different sort of descriptions of what happens to your character if they get a wound and stuff. And the gore and massive damage. There's lots of horrible things on this. BJ rolled very well. So oh, good. You have so on your next action. Well, immediately actually, you vomit. <laughs> You begin throwing up. You have to, in its mouth. You have you can't on its mouth because its mouth is closed. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, you have disadvantage on your next action. Okay. Could have been so much worse. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Oh, you could have. <laughs> Does he still have a hand? He still has a hand. It's in this thing at the moment, and the hand. But it, it's the, still attached. That right. hand is still attached. Which hand was it, PJ? Right or left? Favorite. He wouldn't have thought it through. He'd have no. just gone instinctively. So his, his surgical hand. Annoyingly. Yeah. Um, it's still in there, and the the pain is agonising. You feel like just can't. It's just been torn. You know, it's absolutely torn, but it's still there, and you can still feel the d digits moving, and the digits feel heat. Oh fuck! I've acided the hand. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's. It's the heat. Dare I say it? It's like if when were... your hand is near but not touching acid. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, but that the acid went down. Yeah. So it's the heat rising up. So you can you can already hear the. Um, now, PJ now has to describe something because as the acid burns up the interior of this thing, and bits of it just start falling off. What does it look like when this creature literally burns up from the inside? Your hand is still inside it. And it's trapped. It's like, so, this thing's dying. Describe to me what it looks like as this as Wendy's on his back. <laughs> so, the smoke sort of starts pouring out of it from everywhere. Um, the, the dog starts screaming, get, get me out, get me out! Um... And yeah, I think that the thing would start sort of 
almost thrashing around a little bit, I guess. Because it's losing control. Mm -hmm. But it opened its mouth at that point? Uh, it's... It opens its mouth to scream. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow that. I'll allow oh that because you did the killing killing blow. Oh, um, you do. You do take another two points of damage as this thing moves its head. Okay. And it tears up like your forearm, just completely tears it up as you're as you're sort of pulled back. I imagine maybe blazes there just to try and pull you out of the way as this thing is rolling sort of screeching like Rah! and Wendy like you, there's there's smoke billing, billing out of it and it's all, almost like this whole thing is starting to just discombobulate it's just like it's almost like bits of meat and wires are just going it's the whole thing is and I try and untangle stuff and sort of flip backwards <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're going to have to make a check for it yeah, um, if I don't flip, but then I'll fall. So if you want to keep, um, you may not have to roll a check if you keep your boots on. You know, if you want to keep your boots and retrieve them afterwards. But if you want to, I don't want to get burned. Well, I guess they're pretty icky anyway. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm going to recognise that I'm going to need new boots. Yeah. Take my gun and just leap off. Okay. Elegantly. I, I, I won't. You can you can do that. I'm not going to get you the roll for that. Like when you can just as soon as the the ground softens beneath her, she hops back. It's not the most elegant landing, um, but this thing and you can see this thing and there's as it's sort of com coming apart. You can see there are it's human bits as well. It's like a like a per like a human being burning from the inside, and it's horrific. The stench is nightmarish. Everyone make a body save. Am I still at disadvantage? Yes. Oh, I'm at disadvantage on this one too. What was it body? Mm hmm This nice. this will not incur stress. This is just a uh, um this is this is just something for for flavour. Yeah. Uh forty five. So that's the fail. Okay. Zam you throw up. <laughs> Wendy. Seventeen, which is a success. You do not throw up. I've had worse Thursdays. <laughs> God, imagine that. I can't make a note of that. Uh, Blaze. 36, which is a fail. Oh, yeah, you... You... Wretch. What the fuck was... <laughs> it's almost worse now that I'm in a room full of men being sick. Yeah. It's just like, what? And what did, the dot, what did the dot get? As he's looking Seven. at his ragged out arm. 72, fail. <laughs> I love the, the image of Wendy just absolutely covered in cotton. going, I've had worse Thursdays. Is everyone else like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> is it is the same smell that was coming up the lift, or is this a different smell? Um, this is a different smell because this is like, yeah. this is the acid has burned away something Two that's. Good questions, Vince. Go is that it. my disadvantage done? <laughs> that was. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. The one and two. I didn't gain stress for mine, but two nearby comrades failed the save. So do I gain stress for that? Yes. Because of deflated. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. Do I gain <laughs> stress for failing? Do I gain two or one? Um, one. One. Do we get stress for that? For the uh, not for the vomiting. vomit. Not for the vomit. Okay. I, I that okay. was just a flavour thing that turned I into, do. into oh. a hilarious. It wasn't thing. a very nice. I, thing. If it's for the vomit, PJ, I would say. Yeah, yeah, well, for the, for oh, they failed, didn't they? Their yeah. Okay. Saves, yeah. Okay. But that was for the <clears throat> vomit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Vince is mean. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what you mean. <laughs> um. So as this thing sort of like it's just a puddle of meat and parts, machine parts, and it's hissing and it's revolting. You're in the room with this thing. And and also, like, whatever was left of that navigator. The android. I think um, I need there's no boots. chance of fix, fixing her, is there? No. I'm just going to walk what? out to the from the quarters to the office and get to work on my hand with my one of my first mm. aid kits. Mm. You were kind of... You're all, you're all... All of this happened within 
the office type okay. section. So it was kind of like in the doorway yeah. of the quarters. But just, just move away to somewhere where I can start bandaging yeah. and trying yeah. trying so, to do something. Yeah, so you can so you walk can... out of the office to get away from the smell. Yeah. What yeah. um what size shoes? Does yeah. The uh, android wear. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. Uh, they won't fit Zam. No. Les, you were going to get me some shoes. I'm just going to check them over. There, yeah. <laughs> They might fit you, Wendy. <laughs> they're sort of pale. They're not like uh, work boots. These are more like you know, like the, the standard flight suit, sort of like yeah, a train, yeah. train a soft, soft sort of boot kind of thing. Yeah. Sam will take them off and throw them over to <clears throat> Wendy. Here you go. Thank you. And I will put them on. Is yeah. there any point in looking around the uh, the cap? Quarters. In the captain's quarters, if you want to look around there, <clears throat> the room is dark. I mean, it it's, smells awful in here. And when you shine the light round, there is another thing that is disturbing to look at. Is the walls of this one almost look? There are more sort of like organic. It looks soft around the edges. There's some shapes that are a little bit weird. Um, there's a small sort of a hole in one part of the wall and uh, when you the, the lights don't work in this room at all you'd have to use your flashlights <clears throat> and when you um when you sort of it, something in that hole sort of catches the light of the torch um, if you want to do a thorough investigation there may be a couple of things in here but it's up to you yeah yep yeah. okay what's in the hole um you're you're approaching that, and when you look through, it it's strange at first. It's a reflective surface, because this this hole almost looks like a almost looks like a boil or some sort of pucker. It's it's, it's strange. It's almost like it's peeling away a little bit, and it's you immediately recognise it, Zam. It looks very very similar to those satellite panels that you took off two three seven. It seems it's almost like something's tucked, tucked one of them behind the wall. It's weird, but it's the same coloration and everything. It's very odd. In the rest of the room, you there is the captain's card, his own card. Lovely. Um, there are also there's a, a box of cigars. There's a there is a. Um, he has his own. I mean, his room. I mean, it looks nightmarish now. It's like the upside down version of a nice captain's cabin. Um, but there's like a, a booze locker and a, just a spectacular sort of wooden bed. Although the wood looks soft and cracked in places, um, like it's rotted somewhat. Um, you find a like a, a black um, sort of credit card. With the cap captain's name, Captain Preston, is the name of, of this particular captain. Um, the, the credit card. The yeah. credit card. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, is there a lighter by the cigars? Yes, yes. A can I have a four cigars and a lighter, please? Well, <laughs> well, you could. I mean, there's a box of. I mean, there's probably. Let's see how many. How so many cigars are in there? We and love it when think, we have to do roll. Do you think the cigars. captain would would want one? <laughs> oh, there's there's exactly four cigars left. Perfect. Oh. So you can take them, and there's a golden lighter that has it's got a strange sort of embossing on it. It looks like a sort of a ram's head with like sort of curved horns on it. it looks very expensive, sort of gold and silver inlay. Um, Wendy comes back out and distributes cigars. Mm. It's for the stench. It helps. Mm. So we all have a cigar if you want one. <laughs> are you um are you checking the um sort of meeting room as well? I was going to ask first. Does this does whatever's left of the captain look like it's connected to anything like deeper in the in the ship? I'll give you this. Yeah. Um, there are bits certainly on the back. 
and there's certain tubes that are stuck out and there's certain most of this thing is dissolving and still still going but you were up close and personal with it and the way that this thing what, what's left of this thing when you look around the wall there's certain parts of the wall there's these certain sort of almost looks like connections that you imagine would marry up <coughs> with what was in the back of this this thing so maybe he was connected to that in some way but that disconnected th now though he's completely disconnected now and that's one of the horrifying things about it because those connectors are sort of built into the wall so this captain this person would have had to have been literally sort of stuck into the wall and then stepped out it doesn't make sense I'm not going to get him to roll for it, but <laughs> no, I was just wondering whether it was worth. Yeah, I would say with what's what's going on. Fire to what's left of it. Yeah. God, you want to set fire? Is yeah. um, when I it was just in case this thing was still like, like in any way. It doesn't look like there, there is a. It's not connected to it now, but yeah. there's there's hints that this thing was in here mm. for okay. a, for a while. And slightly, I mean, looking at that, when you got up close and personal with it, a lot of it was more, it was almost part, part machine. Do you know what I mean? There was a good part of, it was a merging of human flesh and machinery. So I'm wondering if, if, if you did set fire to it, if the doors then to that room would sort of auto shut as a kind of security thing and we could just booze and cigarette lighter it. Run away and go. Right, can I can I get that panel first? Uh, what the the one with the connectors and stuff? Yeah. No, that's no the no the um the echo panel. That is too. It it's seems too like it? it's it's there's there's something behind the wall. It's almost like you you peel off some wallpaper and there's something behind it. It's just there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you can't. Idea then, yeah. Yeah. I'll um. Yeah, I'll leave and. Yeah. Well, we've got there's the whiskey in there as well, isn't there? Yeah, so there's some more. Yeah, there there, there is. Ima imagine like the the best sort of like hotel, <laughs> in room bar. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, high quality take stuff. The, take the really good stuff and then throw the not so good stuff in the room to set fire to it. Okay, you want to set fire to the room? Where the remains are, they're kind of like in the doorway. Yeah. Between the, of the of the quarters, they're not in the quarters. Because you had the fight kind of like in between the two rings. What's setting fire to the wall thing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want to um, essentially almost like a, make a sort of put some alcohol down and then what? Molotov it and see what happens? How do you want to do this? It's the second time I've done that. It's either that or cut those tendrils off using the hand welder. Which tendrils are you talking about? The ones in the, the... you know the the ones that were coming out of the wall. Mm. They were going into the captain. Do mm. you want to cut them out? Or do it, he's not connected do they now? Look like he, he, those those he's uh... not connected now. But do they look like they're still active? No. No. I mean, leave it then. It might be too dangerous to start setting fire to things. And... <laughs> Now, now they worry about danger. <laughs> <laughs> what is Blaze doing during all of this? Composing myself and um, wiping the sick, checking my suit, ruined. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you're bright. Oh wife. god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Dress uniform. laughs> this ain't never gonna come out. Um, can I go check on the dock? Z yeah. Zam will come out and he'll just like slap Blaze on the back. And he's got like all that kind of like. Oh, weird. Zam is covered. Yeah, he's Absolutely. covered in it. So he's going to be like this big handprint on on his dress uniform. And he's just going to slap him on, on the back, give him a well oh. done. Thanks, Zam. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! You hey, duck. How's the hand holding up? I've been better. A hey, duck of a Janita stim pack. I, uh, I've, I've got some of my own, thank you. All right. 
Well, I think it's about time we evacuate. We need to get to the cryopods. What the hell for? And then we need... We still need to get the pod to repair our own ship or we're not going anywhere. God damn it. The cryopods are back down near where we came in. We go down there. We check on the surviving passengers. We go down one more level. We get the part we need. We leave. Oh, as simple as that, eh? I mean, nothing's ever simple, but... It's what we've got. I hope you got more of that acid. No. Whatever that was. No, I, I don't. Doc, um, do you have pain pills? Did you bring any with you? I've got um, first aid kits, if they have them in them, which I would assume they do. Oh, no. One of them did have pain pills, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think you found some pain pills, didn't you? Yeah. Um, Doc, you would know that pain pills, um, when ingested, they immediately restore 1d10 health and lowers your stress by 1. But there, there's, we, there is a danger of addiction and stuff, but that's literally if you're popping them all the time. Can we assume I've taken one? Yes. If you, if you, yeah, you take one. You know that to sort of. Okay. I, I would say once you've bandaged up, you'd be like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. popping it and then. So, what, sorry, what was it? You restore. Uh, you restore 1d10 health per pill. Okay, so that's. So, um, with this, because mm -hmm. I've gone onto the second row after taking my wounds. Mm -hmm. So if I, I've just rolled a six, so I restore the two from that row and then go back up to the other row, or um, normally wounds take a bit longer to sort of heal. I mean, you'll still be wounded, but yeah, yeah, you go up to the. I would say you go up to the next level. You know, you've still got that bad wound on your arm. That's not going away. It's not like it's magically. Yeah. Um, okay. And how much stress was it reduced? Um, by one for each oh, pill. Yeah. Oh, good, down to seventeen. The difference between life and death sometimes. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Says the doctor. Um, I hand him the best bottle of whiskey that I spotted <laughs> with my limited knowledge of expensive booze. There you go. Thank you, Wendy. I'll take a look and go. <laughs> oh, is it not oh. good? <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, it's a really nice ship. I mean, the the, the, the space galliano, the stuff in the bar was wonderful. Yes, I'm guessing this was a gift from a passenger. Oh. Can Zam check comms? To see if comms are working now. Um, there is like a comm unit there, but you press it and it seems to be on. But Just there's no blocked, there's yeah. no real sense that. You can use it, but you don't know how well it's working. Earlier, did we try and go to the bridge? Yeah, yeah we that did. was where you yeah, met we went Cal. Yeah, yeah, that's where we found out there was nothing wrong with the actual mm. communication. Oh yeah, Some, yeah, something is blocking it. Okay. I mean, I'm quite tempted to go back to the Ooh. spa. <laughs> right, hang on. Do you say that out should loud? We go... <laughs> should we I go? I mean, I'm to... quite tempted to go back to the spa. <laughs> you are should we go to an emergency mind. equipment? Probably. Bob. So, I'm so... sorry, Sam. Uh, there's emergency equipment. Maybe we should check that out. It's further down in the ship. Oh yeah. Through the star pool. Okay. Wendy is oddly lively. <laughs> Energized. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Yes, said that way. Okay, so we go to the emergency equipment. So, then straight to so the cryopods. The then to the engine thingy. I'm not a tech guy. I think you should hang back, Doc. I'm coming with you. Well, yeah, but just... Oh, I'm staying behind you. I'm not a fucking behind. idiot. <laughs> if anything, duck, you take one of these. And I hand him a pistol with three rounds in it. I mean, there's a first type for everything, isn't there? 
Well, I never thought he'd, the dog would hit anyone with a meat hammer, but that happened earlier in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was like twenty minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you head uh, out of the captain's office and the quarters. Oh, there's somebody in the VIP lounge as well, though, isn't there? There's like the, the very dead looking somebody. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're not going there? No. Wasn't on the docks list. <clears throat> as you head back, I can help it. back through um, the this this deck past the, the two lifts and you can see the open crew lift which is still sort of twitching a little bit uh, and the lights are flickering on but it's still sort of stuck and at an angle as you walk through you're a... and the sounds of metal creaking in a way which is quite disconcerting and uh, but you pass the VIP lift um, past the Wings of Icarus staircase, the crescendo of the Wings of Icarus staircase, um, which is still a magnificent thing, although the rest of you right now are just looking at the state. Um, it's look, they're looking like they're in a horror film now, and I love it. I am here for <laughs> it. Um, and there's the double doors, which Wendy looked at before. She looked through before. And you open up into the into the sort of the pool and the deck side area of this spaceship it's completely set up like a there's a there's an enormous swimming pool outside and you, the rest of you see now that when you look up it's startling to begin with because you can see space there's almost it doesn't look like there's anything between you and the void and vacuum of space until your eyes slightly adjust and you can just make out the details of hexagonal shapes of of like the the dome that is encompassing this entire space it's like unlike anything you've ever seen before there's even so there's some holographic palm trees and there's there's loungers there's a large sort of decking area and there's some steps leading up to a large balcony that's even closer to the sky, skies above. Um, on the far right hand side, there's also there's nobody here. <laughs> Absolutely no one here. To the right hand side, you can see a bar, an empty looking bar. That is considerably more Hawaiian themed than the one that was downstairs. Um, on the left hand side, you see a sign that says emergency equipment. And as you step through, you do see that the the swimming pool, the large oval swimming pool, the star pool that was spoken about in some of the introduction videos. It should be clear, like wonderful blue water. It almost looks black. It looks like oil. So I wanted to go for a swim. <laughs> Let's keep our distance from that. And it, it even bubbles a little bit. Okay, double time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, can we can we quietly double time? You heard the back. <laughs> Keep it down. <laughs> and uh, Zam, you immediately you immediately move uh, over. Zam is going to waddle over to emergency equipment. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and the doors open, the door opens up. And a lot of this emergency equipment is lifeguard kind of gear. <laughs> <laughs> there are flotation devices. There, oh yeah. There's pool you know, noodles. Here we go. <laughs> there is there is nothing this is not this is not emergency equipment for <laughs> full of weapons and, and <laughs> ammo. This is how to keep tourists safe when they're having a swim. Um, but the, but there is a to... there is a, there is an emergency med kit. There is, there is another med kit that has some stim packs as the stim so. I lean over to Zam in his ear. Any more bread ideas, grease monkey? <laughs> so the cryopods then. 
Are you all? Have you all stepped into the emergency equipment? No. Okay. Wendy we is see shuffling. There. Kind of, I'm nearby, but I've I've stayed out because I'm grumpy about the pool not being available. Okay. So where where are you at the moment, Wendy? Just to, just kind so we can picture. Just outside the door yeah. of emergency equipment. Okay. Just below the word area on the map, if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as the rest of them are sort of in, and the dock, you can take the med kit. Yep. Which is um, very similar to what was on the bridge. It doesn't have a pistol, of course, but it's got like, you know, there's more pain pills and there's more bandages and all this stuff. So you're, you're, you're getting a little collection of things. <laughs> um, although there is, you do so, see um, in this place, there is a cooler box like people have on the beach. So if you wanted to put some stuff in there and carry it around, you can do that. I don't know where you got you guys came into this place with toolboxes. And I don't know where you've left them. <laughs> That's on me. Cause you came in here with emergency like maintenance equipment. In the restaurant probably when we were Yeah. Yeah. Doing... Yeah. Um Sam's gonna turn to uh Wendy and say out loud. Hey, uh, Wendy, uh, there's nothing uh, of any interest in emergency equipment. But maybe you could teach Blaze how to use a gun, because his keeps jamming, and uh, you seem to be more of a Marine than he is. <laughs> and then just walks off. I cock my pistol. <laughs> I'll show you how to use a gun. He sparks up his hand welder and says, I did more damage with this. You know, this this could wait. As this is happening... I mean, I'm happy to let this go. This is fun. <laughs> okay. Me and you, Sam. All I need is three minutes. <laughs> I just need two. And then he walks through the uh, double doors into the uh, staircase. As he, um... As Sam begins walking over to the double doors... And, uh... Oh wait, and Wendy, you clock this first. There's someone coming down from those steps leading up to the balcony. And they've got a gun in their hand. It's not pointed at you, it's down by their side. Um, they are wearing a sort of a, a dark blue, a bluey grey sort of most overall, um, it still bears the sort of look of the stylings of uh, the other uniforms that you've, you've seen here. Um, and when they see you, like you, you lock eyes with them, they sort of hold their hand up briefly. They're 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 a little distance away, but they hold does, their hand up. Does the uniform look like the crew kind of grey uniform, or does it look like the security uniform that we? It, it looks it's less security it's more like one of the crew slightly different but more like one of the crew and wow. you can see there's a name across it says Hutch in big bold letters let's do this I, I wish you no harm we come in peace are you marines I heard you say you were Marines. Some of us are, or have been, or may well one day be Marines. I, I don't understand. Why? Yes, yes. Yes, we're Marines. Uh, are you crew? Sam snorts when uh, Blaze says we're Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, Sam. I am... Three minutes. <laughs> oh, maybe two. <laughs> as the, as this, this figure who has like sort of pale sort of waxy skin, but they do they do look sort of like very humanoid in appearance. But their hair looks a little tussled. It's fairly sort of almost looks bleach blonde in it in a lot of, lot of ways. Um, but they've got like a stocky stocky face. Um, less sleeker than um, than Cal or some of the other sort of people you've seen here. Um, and may I approach? 
I'm, I mean you no harm. And he, he just drops a gun immediately. Sure, sure. Come on. I take a step tell back. Me, tell me what, what's happened with this pool. Oh, you you don't want to swim in there. Oh, no, I, I really did, but now I don't. I think it's... Uh, I think there's something in there. Uh-huh. I was... Uh, I thought this was one of the safer places, but... I don't know. I was just... Wa I've been watching that pool for days now, and... Sometimes I see things move in there. How many days? I've been, uh... I was activated about six days ago. I, um... I didn't know what had happened at first. All of the... Passengers were nowhere to be found. I. The other droids on the ship, they were. They were already activated when I woke up and they were acting strangely. Some of them. Some of them acted violently to each other. I. I'm just a maintenance droid. I'm, I'm not an engineer. And you can see, like, he's got like a one of the bands on his arm, sort of says maintenance. And it is more of like a boiler suit kind of thing. And he looks confused, but you do notice he's a lot more lucid than the other ones that you've met. Oh. I, I thought they had sent someone to help. And when you said you were Marines, I, I thought we could. Someone had been sent to get the passengers to safety. We're working on it. As soon as we can find them. I know, um... There are some down in Cryo Bay. I have, um... I have been monitoring them. When I can. But the rest I do not... Do you, do you know where they are? I, I have not seen them. Something is badly wrong with this ship. Why don't you come down to the cryopods with us? Certainly, I can. I can show you. You show us the way. Yes. Yes. Um. And he he begins walking, and he leaves the pistol behind. <laughs> um. Are you? What happened to you? You look. Did you? God, did you see one of them? We met your captain. He didn't take kindly to us. The, the captain? I have, n I have not seen the captain this whole time. I. No, I don't think you're going to either. Is he dead? I think he's Ooh. been dead a while. Oh, yes. Who's... Who's running the ship? I don't understand. My... I am just a maintenance droid, but... Surely I don't know who would be an authority of... I don't think anybody is at the moment. Your ship... It's done. We just need to find anyone who... Yes, we need to... Might still be alive and leave. Yes, I need to get the people off the ship. My, uh... My primary programming is to keep the passengers and humans aboard this vessel safe. It is all. It's my base set of programs. And we must get whoever we can off this vessel immediately. I will do what I can to help, but you must be careful. There are other things on board. I do not I do not venture lower into the ship than I have to. I'm afraid we need to visit the engine room as well. And at this he sort of stiffens up a bit. The engine room, why do, why do you need to why I do not understand. Our ship needs a part. It's broken down. We can't get very far without one. 
You are a broken ship. Here to fix a broken ship. I. It's broken in a different way. And now he's sort of looking at you all in a kind of like taking you all in for the first time sort of absolutely covered in gore <laughs> <laughs> bandaged and it's th- there's a sort of recognition that you sort of see in androids of just now he's sort of focusing. You are not here to save us, are you? We were told that your communications were down. We came to fix them. We found this. Whatever this is. And now that we are here, we're going to try and save anybody we can. Good. As he's talking, like, the pool begins to bubble out once more and he sort of immediately clocks it. Let us uh, go now. I will, um, we need to barricade this door. I do not I do not have significant clearance to lock the door properly. That would that would be okay. the captain's job. Bing. <laughs> I have the captain's card. <laughs> and, Key card. Uh, and uh, Hutch sort of leads you out, and uh, as the door sort of shut, he he shows you how to sort of pro you know swipe the card, and it's you hear. A <laughs> And a red light appear above the double doors. You can see through the stained glass of those beautiful double doors. The water sort of bubbles up and then down again. And settles settles back once more. As this android sort of looks at you. And you can it's genuine concern on his face. You can you can see this now, whereas the others were just sort of like they were spaced out. He looks it's someone that's almost woken up into this and doesn't know what's going on. Follow me, um, and he um, he leads you down onto the guest floor. So where are we going? To the cryopods. You're heading straight cryopods. to the cryopods. Cryopods. <laughs> okay, which is on on the. We're going down two levels. You're going down <clears throat> two, two, levels, yeah. two levels. Yeah. Are we not going to stop? At the bar and lounge area and pick up the tools and stuff mm-hmm. first. So are you going to head to the on the guest floor? Um, yeah, because we come down the stairway. It's yeah. just a quick through the double doors to just pick up the tools. Okay. Yeah. Check and see if Klaus is still asleep behind the bar. Yeah, and, and you do see um, the, the bartender droid is st- still sat there like that. Still like the blood from where Zam hit him with a bottle of <laughs> liquor. Um, and as you, as you walk in, there's certain parts of the, the carpet that feel softer than normal. You, know, you notice that. Sort of a bit spongy underneath your feet. And then you pick up the tools and leave once again. As you see, as, as Hutch walks in and he sort of looks around like Like he hasn't been to this part of the ship before. This way. It's nice. And he he um he follows it down. He pays even no attention to the blood or the other bartender at the other side. <laughs> um, and he leads you down to the crew deck. Okay, I'm just gonna get on my get my map in front of me. And you see the arrival hall with the crew lift. Um, there's no video, there's no cheesy video playing now. And uh, Hutch steps up and begins leading you through past a sort of service ladder. There, there's a hatch. When he passes through the first door, you can see um, there's a med bay on your right hand side, and there's the door right in front that leads towards the cryopods. Which direction would you want to go? Do you want to go through med bay or, or the. Past the um, service ladder. Let's go through the med bay. Okay. No, oh, there's going to be stuff in the med bay, and there's the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> service ladder, straight in. Boom, done. What would you like to do, players? 
thinking there might be supplies that we could use in the med bay as well. That's uh... let's vote. <laughs> let's take a vote. Okay, who would like who who votes? Heading straight past the service, well, past the service ladder towards the cryopods, and who who wants to do a detour through the med bay? Service ladder. Service ladder. Quick <sighs> oh, I was going to say med bay, but then I remembered that Zam gave Wendy boots, so <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, all right, med, uh, service ladder." Yeah. yeah. Doc says med bay, but he's outvoted. So yeah. yeah. There is another access to the med bay from the cryopods, though. You do know that, so you can come back that way if you want. And are these doors with nice handy windows so we could look for trouble before we go in? Um, this this initial door isn't. It's like mm -hmm. a solid door because it's just crew only. You know, they don't want the, don't want the guests seeing like. And when you pass th through this door and you see a hatch, it's just a simple looking hatch. Um, that says service ladder leading further downwards um, and the door straight ahead and you notice that these parts of the, the ship, there's no bells and whistles do you know what I mean, you, you saw the glitz and glam, this is the, the I mean, it's still nicer crew working conditions than what you're used to but it's still the crew sort of area, as it were um, and there's a simple sort of corridor um, and he opens up the cryo bay and what you see is, a, and when it opens, there is a large, the cryo, this, this cryopod area is a large room, very large room. And it is, it's humming with power. As you know, the sort of power that you need to, sort of, um, the lights are not working properly. They're a little bit dim. And there's lots of there's empty cryopod chambers, and there's also part of the room that looks a little different to the rest of it. There's a section of this cryopod room. I think it's on, on the left hand side, where it looks like the floor has sort of bent inwards, or it's like a sinkhole. A sinkhole has started to happen and some of the cryopods are in it and sort of heading downwards there's another strange thing in this room it's an enormous panel that seems to be growing out from the the floor of the cryo cryo bay and it is cutting it has cut one of the, the cryo Bay cryopods in half, and this cryopod had a body in it, and it's cutting the cryopod in half. And this this panel looks like a very large panel from a satellite relay, and it looks like it's just been pushed up. But the ground, but the ground, the floor where the panel has been pushed up, it's weird. It doesn't look smashed. It's almost like. It's soft. It almost looks like something has just pushed it, pushed it through somehow. It's a strange experience. Everyone, make me a sanity save. <laughs> I'm still at disadvantage. Um, no, by this time you're, um, and Zam, you're you're back to regular again because yep. the, the time has has passed. Sorry, what are we doing? Sanity. Sanity yeah. save, please. Okay, Zam, what did we get? Uh, 98. Oh, success then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you get a stress for that? Oh, fucking hell, Zam. I'd succeeded. I have to get a fucking stress <laughs> now for it's, you, fucking. It's all because Blaze riled me up. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy, what did you get? Uh. Oh. Oh, that's better than I thought it was, but it's still not good enough. It's a 35 against a 20. So that's a fail. Do I get a stress for that as well? Wait, does he just keep getting stresses off of everyone's fails? Yeah. Yeah. Blaze, what did you get? Love me. <laughs> 18 out of 20. Knew you were my favourite. Yeah. 
It was because I've got under Zam's skin, so I'm all like... <laughs> See, <laughs> I rolled a fucking four, and I've still got two stresses. <laughs> uh, more pain pills. Yeah. Up one of your pills, duck. Yeah, you, you I can't wait to get off this fucking ship. The arm hurts. The arm hurts, Doctor. Yeah, like, I, I, I oh. think you're right. You know. So, uh, oh, back down to 18. The, the pain pills are there. Yeah, I've taken one. Have you just taken another one? Yeah, just the one. Okay. You know the danger of it, Doc. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but right now it's survival, baby. That's yeah. what it's all about. But, uh, like, rest of you, this shouldn't, this doesn't make sense. It's it's like the left half of the room has started to deteriorate and rot and like sink in, and then you've got this part of another ship that doesn't make any sense. And close to the close to where this is happening, there is a pod with a couple of uh, with a few more human bodies in it. I go over and I check that pod. Um. There is a there's the pod that is next to the one that I said was sliced in two. You you see, well, it's almost like being pushed through, and there was a body in it. Seemed to be a human man, and you don't know if I mean the the pod itself is just it's just a red smear. Do you know what I mean? They whatever happened, the impact of it, um, and the pod that's next to it has Sarah Madigan in it. And she's very close. She's the closest to where this whole room is starting to degrade. But she's she's asleep. Can we move these pods? Um, that would take uh, equipment. We do not. Okay, then we're waking her up. You wish to? Okay. Um, we would need the captain's. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's if... made of something. It makes that noise when you pull it yeah. out of your pocket. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I can open any door. Yeah, um, and you see, like by these cryo bays, there are like little keyboards, and you, you put a card in, and it's a wonderful sort of retro futuristic sort of monitor. You know, the green type, and it and uh, Hutch sort of stays there for a bit. And, he sort of, and then um, from his pocket, he, he pulls out a couple of wires and he sort of, he plugs himself in to it. And when he, when he plugs himself into his neck, you can see the emblem of uh, the Amalgamated Interests logo. Because that's the type of android he is. Top range. Dick Sloan wasn't, of course, but... Uh, <laughs> pull one out. Uh... <laughs> Uh, he's, still still alive. Alive. he's still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. alive. Still alive. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we're gonna fix him. And he 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 plugs himself in. And he goes to plug it into the. He, he's about to plug it into the sort of the monitor and the and the console. And he pauses for a moment. And he looks up at you all. I haven't um. I haven't connected myself to the system since I awoke. The way I f figured it. All of my uh, compatriots that have been connected to the system were corrupted in some way. Can we open the pod without you connecting to the system? I, I cannot think of another way, but... Then this is how we save the passengers. Yes. You are right. And he plugs in. He hears sort of... And he's pauses for a second and his eyes close and you can see like some rapid eye movement happening for Andon I, I whispered a blaze maybe point your gun at his head 10-4 as he sort of <laughs> the eyes are closed and there's rapid eye movement and his hand sort of goes over the sort of keyboard in front and he just starts typing in things he's not looking but you can see that he's, he's filling in like the passcodes and stuff like that and, and then it begins the wake up sequence and you can see in this in this particular cryo tube there is a uh, it's a it's a young well it's a, a female in her mid 20s short blondish hair um 
although a little longer than any image that you saw, Doc. Um, absolutely, there's no discerning. There's a small bit of a tattoo just on the top part of a clavicle. Um, but other than that, she's just in the simple sort of PJs. You're sleeping cryo PJs, whatever they are. <laughs> um, and the pod begins to and open up. And then it's sort of it's it's blocked by something. She's she begins. There seems to be a the system does not want to open. I do not understand. I do not understand. And you see like on the screen like a malfunction. Boop, 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 boop. And you can see the girl in the in the pod, like she's sort of beginning to she's beginning to wake up somewhat. But the doors it's not opening properly. Can we see us any any sort of physical block? Or obstacles. It doesn't. Them. It doesn't seem to be. You're you're quite close to where that satellite sort of panel is, and some of the degradation and stuff. But there's nothing really there. It's almost like it's like something's blocking it. It's like something's stopping it from opening. Sam, can you get this open? Screwdriver. Oh. Right, I think the crowbar's in the toolkit, isn't it? Hmm? Mm. Yeah. So um, can you use the crowbar to try and open it. Hmm. And as you as you're doing this. There's like a of gas that begins to seep into this cryopod. So it's going bam, 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 bam. And that's dangerous this gas. A danger. Or... Yes, it's uh, okay. <laughs> um, carbon dioxide is just being poured into this thing as she's getting that. <coughs> Zam, are you going to try and? Brute force this thing. Yeah. As this is going bam, 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 bam. Well, I mean, do they want me to? Yes. Right, okay. <laughs> um, then I'm just worried it's going to make the gas worse. There's a, there's a the thing is trying to close as well. It's sort of stopped and then yeah, it's trying to yeah. close up. But you've managed to get the crowbar in before it can yeah. close. Um, okay. Make Let's a strength brute check. Brute force it then. Brute force it. Make a strength check. Uh, have I got anything? Can I add mechanical repair or industrial equipment? Or I'll allow mechanical repair. Mm. Is anyone else doing anything while Zam's doing this? Um, Wendy was gonna go and gonna look if, see if there was any oxygen or breathable air. There are um, masks. There, there either are some, here yeah. or if not in this room, then in the there are rebreathers on the wall. There's some. There's a like a sort of a unit uh, that has some. Yeah, yeah, yoink. I got a ninety-one, so <laughs> it's not Effort. it's not working, and you get a point of stress. Yep. Sam, as this thing's starting to close down, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "What are you doing, Sam? Stop tickling it and open it." <laughs> what are you doing? Why don't you come over here and help me? God damn it! And you see Hutch I'll is like, as well, he's, also help. he's like furiously sort of typing at the keys. Like, I'm trying, this is trying to lock, it's trying to lock me out. What are you doing? Good ball. Yeah, all three of us try. All three of us, yeah. So how are you guys going to do this? The crowbar's still in there. I think we're all going to like try and bounce on it at the same time. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, push. <laughs> yeah. And okay. at the moment there's any sort of lift, if I can get the rebreather thing i don't know what size this okay. is and the yeah. gap you're, you're going to have to try and, i mean it's either you can either try and get it onto her there's like a, mm. it's like a mask with a small tank you yeah, know yeah. What I mean? so you could try and get it onto her or you could try yeah. and pull her out Are you go try and get the mask onto her um yeah because i don't think they can hold the thing open for very long <laughs> <laughs> okay big roll um It'll be with advantage because everyone's chipping in. But it's going to be a strength roll. Who would like to make the roll? Not Wendy because Wendy's doing something else. Well, I if assume I can not still... me. My strength's 32. If I can still use my mechanical repair, mm -hmm. then that takes it up to 49. 
And if I got advantage, could Damn. try that. He's he's in the most optimal position. We're helping Zam. Okay. He's the fulcrum. The, <laughs> the linchpin. Uh, right, so I've rolled a 48. So we've done it. But okay. Do you want me to do you want, roll? You can re yeah, you might get a critical. Might get a critical. Yeah, if, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could get a critical. And then the lid just flies off. <laughs> um, no, we'll ignore that one. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, like all three of them, and it does take a lot. And, and Doc, you're helping as well, and your arm is agony as this as they're all screaming and just open it up and it's starting to open up and Wendy you can you can you get your hand under and you, you help sort of lift it up as this goes go <coughs> and mask on her or are you trying to grab her out? What's Wendy doing? How long will it take to get her out? Yeah she's strapped in at all or? She's not really strapped in. She's not really strapped in. And is there enough lift, enough gap that if they can hold it open? They succeed with all three of them. They, yeah. In, in which you case, don't know how long it's going to last. In which case, I'll, yeah. I'll go ninja grab. Okay. Then talk me into it, Wendy. How? What? What do you want to roll? Whew. Uh, I want to. I'm going to try and grab her by the shoulders because you know I'm good at being, <laughs> people's legs chopped. <laughs> So I'm going to rescue the top <laughs> half of that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Right. So, so if if they drop it, it's, you know. Yeah. Sorry. So um, it's going to be probably a strength check. If you're trying yeah. to grab her out, it'd be a strength check. It probably would have been a speed if you were just getting the mask on yeah, yeah. to make sure she stayed yeah, alive. Is better. And can I use my athletics? You can. Cool. What about your military training and stuff? Nothing training. I don't know if that... Nothing trains you for this. this. <laughs> <laughs> Dragging my compatriots away from battle yeah. zones. With or without. Oh, all okay, of yeah, okay, think okay. Of, think of okay, okay. You talked me into it. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. I'm so, being very generous. Hang on, that's not advantage. It's some, just an extra ten. So, that's, so I'm looking for less than forty-seven. Come on, purple. Oh no. No. 62. Luckily, it wasn't critical. So how are you getting into this? <laughs> are you reaching in? I'm just kind of reaching in to grab her kind of under the shoulders and pull her out. Okay. Head first. So you get... You get a good part of the way in. You get hold of her and she's like... <laughs> and you see the panic on her eyes... And then the, the thing closes again. No! Oh! <laughs> thing closes again on you, Wendy. How far in did you get? Did you go into... Was it just I your reckon... arms that went in? I th I'm thinking I might have had a, a bit of a shoulder and possibly bit... even my head in there. Yeah, you, so you get your head... So basically, from there mm. upwards, you're in. So it comes down <laughs> on there. Four. Six points of damage. Oof. And you are trapped as this thing is. It wants to close. But now there's a there's a Wendy in the middle of it. So the airflow is better. Yeah. <laughs> you you're in so, there with the rebreather, yeah? Yeah. So you got it. Yeah. You you put it on the on the girl's Can face. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but also you, you you put it on the girl's face. But now you're in here mm. with this gas as well. So the others are going to have to act quick. Sam, could you use your welder to get through this thing? As all this thing. Bam, 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 bam. I don't think the welder is going to cut cut through it, is it? Because it's a welder more than it is a cutter. It's a glass. I mean, it's, it's a thick glass okay. thing. This is used to... It's not going to set it on fire. <laughs> I saw that look, Vince. I saw that. <laughs> We're all like now carbon dioxide and fluid. oxygen. <laughs> yeah. I can probably just uh, we should try for another the three of us. Shove it open. Okay. 
says you want to go again yeah, but Wendy's still Wendy's st- Wendy's yeah. still trapped in. Yeah, you can make the roll before, unless any, unless someone. Here, here's what you could do. Oh, oh no, the android isn't is. He's sort of plugged in, and he's trying yeah. to. He's he's stopping it from shutting, completely. It's almost like he's fighting a system. Yeah. That's trying to shut it. So. Um, so someone could try and help pull Wendy out, which will help pull the girl out. While the other two can, I'm being very generous here. Oh, I'll, I'll help <laughs> pull Wendy out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Grab her by her belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I got to roll lower than a forty-nine again. Yeah? Okay. Yep. Um, both uh, of you um, have advantage on this. Yeah. People at home, I know I'm being very generous, and there's probably people like, well, I think you're being too kind to them. <laughs> it's a strength. Strength for me. Yeah. Yeah. And can I put in athletics? You can. Or military training. Yeah. yeah. And can I be helpful? Yes. So you'll get advantage on this because Wendy's. So you're basically making Wendy's role essentially because she's just, you know, something's yeah. crunched. <laughs> Probably there. Oh, God, the pain. The pain. I can't imagine. It was with advantage, yeah? Yeah. You both got advantage on your rolls. Okay. First roll was an 83. Second roll. Nineteen. Oh, you're going to say ninety something <laughs> for a moment. So it's <laughs> one you, nine. You immediately 19. feel. You immediately feel the pressure release. Sam's just kind of like, oh god damn it. No. My first roll was sixty-eight, which would have been a fail, and then I got a twenty-seven, <laughs> which my strength is twenty-six, <laughs> but plus ten. Oh, because of the athletics. You prick. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get her out. <laughs> just, and you just like pull them out, and this girl sort of tum- tumbles out as well. Like, and as she tumbles out, there's sort of like the heart monitors and stuff. Just, and this thing, it closes so forcefully once Sam lets go that part of the glass cracks. I'm instantly down checking on her. <laughs> she's she's coughing and she's like <coughs> Of course you know she, 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 she's that. so you yeah so you're instantly trying to re- yeah. reduce the cryo sickness. Yeah. And uh and as she's going <coughs> and then while the doc's doing this the girl um what are the rest of you what are the rest of you doing apart from recovering as Wendy's like you can see Blaze that she's badly she's damaged her shoulder. Droid unhooked himself. Yeah, he's just he's got, and he he unhooks himself at the same time. He's like, ah, oh, he looked like when it shut. There was a there was a like a power surge. He sort of went, and he pulled he sort of pulled himself free, and he's just there going. Oh. And you see like some a little bit of android blood from his eye and from his nose he's like oh Oh, god is she okay is she alive (laughs) she's alive you see like she's she's groggily trying to wake up at the moment blaze zam when do you have a moment as as the doc is checking over this girl wendy i noticed on the uh, ship manifest that there's a security equipment with a safe. I see you got the captain's card. (laughs) Now I reckon... (laughs) Now I reckon there might be some heavy equipment that we could use against some of these beasts. Do you want to go look? Okay. Can we go through the med bay? You can see, like, Just there, there's some bones. Take the edge off. There's some bones sticking through the skin. Wendy, like, she's oh fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you, uh, get you squared away, Doc. You know. Doc, do you need her taken to the med bay? My point to the to what's her name again? Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Are we not going to try and rescue the others? You just came here for one girl? 
There's another. There's like three or four people still there. But you want to do that again? <laughs> what? Touch. Can you open those? Will the system allow you? Hutch sort of blinks, blinks his eyes. I can, I can, tr I can try. Do you know why it wants to keep him? I do now. Why? I swear to God, Hutch, if you say the word consume. <laughs> I don't know. They are becoming it. It is. I don't know another. Can we save them? I think. I think th these people here may be some of the only ones who are, are not infected in some way. Yet, we do. We do not have. It knows. Have we got time to save them? If we do, we have to do it now. Open the pods, Hutch. God damn it, we're doing it again! And as they, as, as they move, and you go to move, Doc, you feel a hand on your shoulder. Just grab hold of your jacket and. <laughs> as, these, as this girl looks up at you. It's okay, Sarah. How the hell do you know her name? Mr. What the hell's going on here, Doc? Mr. Forrest, what the fuck are you doing here? Mr. Forrest? That's a long story, um, which I will whoa, gladly whoa, whoa, tell cowboy. you. We, we, we only came down here just to save one person? What, we will what, save what, as many as we what you, can, Sam. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you, what Sarah, is, what's going? I need you to calm down. Where's my husband? He was right We're next trying. to me. Where's he? As she looks back to the cryopod that has been split in half, and that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Thank you for joining us this week, <laughs> guys. What an epic session that was. Wonderfully played by my wonderful players, as always. I feel like I've both tormented them in both psychological and emotional ways this week, and I couldn't be happier about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as always... Probably should have gone to get the engine part first. Well, you'll, um, you'll find out. Well, as... I, I think... There's gonna be something really rotten in the engines. <laughs> Can we put her back in the cryopod? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've I've got my first action ready for the next time, and it might well be to punch her and knock her out. You know. <laughs> well, is that your punching arm that you uh, got messed up? Because he's got two punching arms. Yeah, he's got two punching arms. He's got law because... and order. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say dick and Touch on. But... <laughs> <laughs> In the bungalow. Um, brilliantly played by my players as always. Uh, what an exciting session this was this week. Started off with monsters, get more into the mysteries, yet more androids. And survivors. Possible survivors. The mysteries upon mysteries play out and the story continues. Can't wait to see where it goes next week. Um... And uh, look look at engine room, that's where it's going. Look at the, I mean, what Gav's doing there, that's exactly what I'm looking for in my players. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we hope you enjoyed it at home. This is uh, it's immense fun for us. We actually kind of, I kind of forget that like we're doing this, we're recording this a lot of the time because we just get into the game. Um, but of course, you should follow the follow us on social media. Um, at Safe Space RPG, and you should follow all of my wonderful players. And guess where you can find them. Jim. Better. <laughs> At Jim Bob 1978. Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it. You've made it I a thing now. Bones coming out of my shoulder and a panicking woman and you want me to go Twitter. <laughs> 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 uh, At Lizzie Boyle says. 
Yes. Uh, no. Kevin. Twitter. At <laughs> uh, Bob Goblin. And Instagram as well. Everything and PJ. Twitter.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> PJ Montgomery uh, at PJ Montgomery. You know how it works. So. I, yeah, yeah. And you can find me on social media at Jester Diablo if you want to find out more of the nonsense that I talk about. Um, <laughs> we're going to um, head off now into the sunset until uh, next week's episode, which may be our mid season finale. We might, we might we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Um, but until then, wherever you are in the world, we love you very much. And just make sure that you stay safe. I'm leaning into it. Just stay safe out there. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.